Hello, dear friends, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Carly. This is Owning Authenticity, and it is my pleasure to get to curl up in a cozy space with a warm beverage, get a little bit cozy or a lot cozy, please. Um, <laughs> hello. And to spend a little bit of time and create a bubble of energy that it almost feels like a hot air balloon, like it can float us over this transition point of 2023 to 2024. And I say float over it as in kind of just rise above it and take it in from above and don't really let the patterning pull at you so much. Hi, what? What can I do for you, Lola? Do you want to come up here? Come here. Do you need in the bathroom? You want up here? Give it a whirl. See if you can. Yeah? Oh, look at you go. Lolo, everybody. Ta-da. <laughs> You're so talented, Lolo. Dude, if you don't got time for a kitty cat palette cleanser, I think you might be on the wrong channel. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's what we're going to do in this video is take a hot air balloon ride and take a gander at the patterns and the conditioning around the new year, quote unquote, and how, how understandably tempting it can be to see this time as like a blank slate, like, you know, it's like this grand beginning, one, one, and I get that, I'm all about like a blank slate, that's my favorite place to be actually, like I, I, I resonate with like getting really excited about this change of the year, but part of like what is lifting the hot air balloon for me this year is all of the contemplations I've had over this last year of how 3D time and linear time is just such an illusion, such a human illusion, and we give it we feed it so much of our power. We put so much power into a clock, into a calendar, into like, that's our power. That's us handing over our power to these things. And again, it's so understandably tempting to do it, like to, to try to get some control over like, the chaos and the endlessness the endless chaos that is being alive <laughs> like like it just it's our best guess at how to give it some some stability you know like like what if we have this seven day cycle and these you know like then when you have a whole week it'll be 52 of those adds up to it like it's just so arbitrary like that's really the word for it is arbitrary and then you know like let's say and I totally get it. If you can't go there with me and like time is not an arbitrary thing, time is freaking real and you're bound to it. And like, that's as far as you are like, or that's, I should say, that's where you are. Then, you know, who the hell even knows if what I'm saying is real or not, <laughs> you know, like I'm just a person on the internet. I'm just sharing what has personally felt soothing to my system and, you know, choosing to explore the idea that time is an illusion that the days of the week were something that humans made up you know and the concept that 52 of these weeks these made up things 52 of them makes up this other made up thing called a year so time being illusory is really the basis of why I want to get in the hot air balloon and just kind of cruise past 1-1-2024. Like, it's just another day. It really is just another day. 
it's just it's just another day and like always when you're on that day maybe not always always like depending on what you do but you can like really mark that occasion and a lot of people do that but like you're really just still you like the blank slate the illusion of the blank slate that the first of the year is going to bring it's all in our mind and like that's where another part of like what is floating this balloon (laughs) is my um wildly fantastical imagination and my belief that if you can imagine it you can freaking bring it to life like if you can see it in your imagination all the components to create it in reality are right there ready to just be put together like if you can see it you can make it so that given that that's what i believe this idea of time is an illusion one one twenty twenty four like that's just another day but that so many people will have this belief that it is a blank slate and that you can begin fresh because it's a blank slate and then they'll get a little ways down the road with their motivation and that's what i'd like to capture as far as like really focusing in on what's really happening there is that the mind is believing that something is possible the mind believes that because it's a blank slate I have a chance (laughs) like the door opened and like enrollments open I can get in there now and it's like right and if your mind is doing that because of some random arbitrary like day on the calendar like you know we only started counting a couple thousand years ago you know like we're only like 2023 or going into 2024 there have been way more years than that okay like and so the fact that this is this is the thing it's like what if we just harness the power of the blank slate and what if we put that back into ourselves and realize that at any moment we can decide that if we can see it in our brain that it is possible to create and by no means do you need to wait for the first of the year to bring your visions to life to bring your ideas to life the things that are born from your heart's desires that you can see that like gosh wouldn't it be beautiful if i made it like this and i put this together with this and then i added in this piece like oh god it's just like (sighs) takes my breath away like (sighs) make it make it you know like i just i i just want to yell like make it make all the things (laughs) everything you can see in your brain make it and here's the other thing that like the blank slate does for us and the the fact that it's facilitating that like we believe it's possible right like we're we're leveraging that new year like the the cliche new year new me like we're leveraging the new year as a new start that says like if i try again maybe this time it'll be different and again i'm like let's take the power of that and let's put it inside ourselves that says at any moment if you will try again it may be different (laughs) it may be really really different like you just don't know at any moment it could be different but if you give up then it just only is what it ever was you know because you didn't try anymore after that and so the the magnetism of what the new year pulls up out of us as far as like it is a new start and since it's a new start what would you want your new start to look like and it starts like you know that tendency to want to create new year's resolutions or whatever where like this is what i'm gonna be going forward or this is the posture i'm gonna try to hold and lean into and hold a little deeper and like i'm gonna try to become this and that vision that ambition or aspiration that naturally gets drawn about of us when we're faced with this blank slate this new start this new limitless potential of like what do you want to be it's possible you know it could happen um we believe we believe and it's (laughs) i love i got talking to my mom here not too long ago about santa claus and we know a person whose kid Um, got to be like 13 12 13 years old and like still was believing in Santa and was like starting to get in fights with kids at school who were telling them that Santa's not real and like 
the fact that the kid had been told like for a fact that Santa is real. Like my parents told me like just it was that clear cut like my black and white like my parents told me and I trust them and like it's it's real because they said it is and I was talking to my mom and I told her I'm like I don't remember it ever I mean Santa came to our house but I don't remember it ever being like a really tragic disillusioning thing I don't even remember finding out that Santa wasn't real and I asked her I'm like what did you tell us about Santa and did you ever tell us that Santa's not real or like how did how did you handle that and because I truly did not remember until she said and then I remembered her saying this a lot that she's like I don't know if he's real but I think you have to believe to receive. <laughs> so she's very non-committal. She's Gemini Sun, like very non-committal in the middle of this question of is Santa real? And I think before long, it her response was like the clue to like, no, he's not. But it's a mechanism for receiving. If you want to believe, if you want to like give yourself over to the possibility that that thing is real, believe in it, believe in it like it's real, then you can receive from it. And so that blank canvas, that new start, that being a little bit more likely to believe in the possibility of something, all of that is your power is my power that can be harnessed and used to float this balloon up over like having to get it all done or like figure it all out or like have it all clearly identified because it's the first of the year and like whoa my gosh what's my intention gonna be like and now we're stressing ourselves which a blank canvas is really anything but stressful because there's no there's no lines to stay inside of. There's no rules. There's no limits. There's there's just open space of whatever you want. That's what your imagination is. And that's what the first of the year really inspires in me is to start imagining like, where could I be one year from now? You know, and it, we get all nostalgic or I know I get all nostalgic about like, where was I a year ago? And I thought about that, like just before I got on here to start recording and I was just like, wow. And that's where the hot air balloon analogy even came from was that this time last year, I had gotten into a run in with someone who was just purely disgusted by me and my behavior. And a couple minutes into that interaction, I became consciously aware that consensus here is not required. <laughs> like I don't need I don't need to finish this conversation because I don't need to. It's it's not needed. It's unnecessary. Like there's we don't we're spinning our wheels here with their disgust and my knowing that I did the right thing. Like I don't need their approval. I don't need their buy-in. I don't need their consensus. I don't need their sign off. I don't need to finish this conversation. And so I interrupted them mid-sentence. I left, I go get in my car, I drive home. And for the eight minute drive home, I screamed bloody murder with like everything in my being that I had, like it, I was full of the energy (laughs) that was coming off of them. And I had to get it out. It was like, like razor blades in my soul to keep it inside of me. And the only thing I could think of, like the most organic, natural thing I could think of was just to fucking scream. And I did. So this time last year, I was on day three of not having a voice because I had screamed for like eight minutes straight. And then I came in the house and made a cup of coffee and I went back to my car because other people were in the house. And I went back to my car and screamed a bunch more and then didn't have a voice for like four or five days. Like literally, like I would I would talk and like the vocal cords, like they didn't rub together. There was nothing, like there just nothing came out. Like I, I was talking like I am now and nothing came out. So this time last year, I was sitting there with no voice. I could I could talk, but no sound would come out. And like 
if you've been around my channel, you know that like talking is one of my favorite things. Singing, talking, like <sighs> stimming with my voice, like just making the same sounds over and over. Like it's important to me. I value my voice very highly. And so that interaction, what it really gave me was this experience of I allowed that energy to come at me and I did not retaliate. I just said, I interrupted mid-sentence and said, thank you so much for your feedback. We are done here. I'll see you later. And I left and they just, you know, like I, I walked away, didn't look back. I didn't give any of the painful energy that they had directed at me. I didn't give any of it back to them, but it still was in there. I had still soaked it up through that interaction. And so it had to come out. And the way that I handled releasing it was detrimental to me and detrimental to my quality of life. As far as like, I soaked up all of that because I stayed there for as long as I did. Even like two, three minutes of it was, I had to scream for like 15, 20 minutes to get it out, even just soaking it up for that teeny amount of time. It was my, my doing of soaking it up by standing there as long as I did. And it was my doing of how I expelled it. And so when I look back and I think back to where was I a year ago, my boundaries were quite porous. I mean, today I have no more contact with that person, but that's because much more water went under that bridge after that. But I would not stand there for even five seconds of the beginning of the conversation that led to the, like the full version of what I eventually absorbed. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't endure five seconds of that shit. Like I wouldn't, I got nothing to prove. I got nothing to, I don't have to listen to anything that feels like that. You know, like I give myself that permission. So that feels like a huge freaking load off. It feels like, again, like floating. Last year, I couldn't even do one of my very favorite things because of this person and what they had done to me and how I had had to take care of myself and now I'm suffering the consequences of this like this is where I was a year ago and right here right now I would have like basically told that person to fuck off in the first five seconds <laughs> like we wouldn't have even been in that boat you know like there's no I don't need to suffer I don't need to suffer during I don't need to suffer after like my relationship with my suffering is much different now and I can only attribute that to my continued very scorpionic, deep emotional purging that continues to come through, especially like at the time I'm recording this on December 30th, 2023, the cancer full moon is just, uh, just what we had not too long ago, like a week ago. Yeah. The 20, the 26th and it's the 30th. So less than a week ago. Um, and I have been having like a whole nother wave of, inner child pain of like inner child unmet needs that she still needs so much soothing and comfort and I still just will get swept into this this outburst this little sob of like ow that hurts you know like and just this practice this again this scorpionic deep emotional purge the practice of letting it, letting it out, let it come out, let it out. And that's where I want to take a second and really commend me a year ago as far as like, I didn't, I didn't try to hold it in the thing that felt like razor, ba razor blades in my soul. Like I wasn't even attempting to hold it in. I'll get it out however I can. I, it wasn't super graceful. I hurt myself in the process, but I did expel the energy. You know, like I did get it done. It wasn't graceful, but it was like a patchwork quilt. But like it was a quilt and it worked. Okay. And like that's worth something. My Capricorn resourcefulness wants to be like, dude, if screaming is the only tool you got, at least you got a tool. 
okay? Like we could celebrate that. So like let's let's take a second and celebrate that of like any tool you have to get the job done. Even if it's not graceful, even if you hurt yourself in the process, even if you hurt somebody else in the process, I'm sure, I'm quite positive, it did not feel good to the other person to be walked away from in that moment. And I know that because two months later, we had the all the water under all the things. So anyways, where I was a year ago and where I am now of like, you know, again, I think it kind of comes back to like a self-care, self-love, self-protection kind of progression of things. And like, if you expand it out even further where like self-care isn't even really first, like I said, self-care, self-love, self-protection. If we go before self-care, I think self-like, (laughs) self-tolerance, self- acceptance to some degree like has to be kind of on board we have to stop rejecting ourselves to some extent before we're even willing to take care of ourselves and so like i've been practicing self-care for you know coming up on a decade i mean a couple of years i'll have like a whole decade under my belt of daily self-care like this is the first decade of me taking care of myself every day no matter what with teeny teeny tiny number of exceptions in in those years and it looked different every day it was a different amount of time every day it was a different set of activities every day it looked different every day but to show up and that consistently to do self-care that consistently i will say like i i was always baffled by the concept of self-love I never could get there, but out of such consistent self-care and showing up for myself every day, self-love grew naturally out of spending that much time caring for myself, studying myself, understanding my needs, which is to say understanding, you know, why do I have these needs in the first place? And when I get into that contemplation, often the things that I really hated about myself that like, I'm so needy, I need so much attention, yada, yada, yada. When I understand why that is, I have a lot more compassion. I mean, when I think about like what I would call now the emotional neglect of my childhood, the frequent bullying experiences of my upbringing and adulthood, <laughs> like it's still working on healing this. Um, when I allow myself to think about my history and like where where my being has come from like what has shaped and formed who i am today i have so much more compassion for the being that was basically starved of loving attention and so now i have a deep need for loving attention in part i think because i have a little bit of ground or a lot of ground to make up for you know and so to put it down into that context and to just let myself like grant myself the peace and grace around whatever my needs are and so the more i get familiar with who i am and where i came from and what i need and how i need to be taken care of it's like the love grew naturally i think because the self-care and especially the consistency of the self-care led to self-understanding and out of self-understanding self-love grew and out this is really where we're going with this out of self-love the the growing and the sturdying and the solidifying of my self-love it led me to see and this is a lot thanks to my yearly mantra for 2023 which is not a resolution at all it's a very different process in my own opinion but my yearly mantra for 2023 was the year of spiritual support and so every morning i i did two-way prayer where i wrote to the god of my understanding my ancestors my spirit guides my soul council angels whatever you want to think of it as all of them all of the above i'm like anybody who's out there who wants to listen and support me back here's some things and what do you want to say back to me and 
every day it was always about how much they loved me how lovable i am and so my my mantra my every morning two-way prayer during 2023 has taken the self-love that i had already cultivated through really consistent exceptional care of myself taking that into the two-way prayer and letting them kind of like them my higher power whatever letting them kind of step on the gas of just how much love there really is for me if i will take the time to receive it and i mean that wholeheartedly because truly it was a matter of the time of like writing the letters back and forth and if i would do it they would they would give it to me you know so like you put even just a little bit of skin in the game and like you get so much out of it um but that yeah that yearly mantra like really let me grow and flourish and nourish my budding self-love and out of that self-love grew naturally self-protection and that is what is most different at this point is my willingness to stand up for myself my willingness to speak the truth of what I am willing and not willing to accept. You know, like I, another piece of like where I am now compared to a year ago is like in this last year, I have let go of a lot of things. I have cut ties with a lot of things that I don't, I don't need that in my life anymore. You know, like if it's going to come back around to me, you know, they say like, if you love something, set it free. And if it comes back to you, it's yours forever. And if it doesn't, like it was really never yours to begin with. And so, yeah, I feel like I've set so many things free, just kind of giving them back to source, giving them back to unconditional love. Like this is yours. (laughs) This is not mine. I'm not trying to carry this anymore. I am not trying to hold this anymore and again all of that like it does fall under that umbrella of self-protection keeping out like kind of really letting my boundaries become firm as far as keeping out the things that like dude like that doesn't feel good and I don't need two and a half minutes to decide that that doesn't feel good like you know being more willing to stand up for myself when something like a razor blade is being shoved into my soul, you know, being like, okay, I think that's enough. Like one's enough. I don't need the next 50 that are going to prove that like, yeah, this really hurts. You know, um, that feels like such powerful growth, such amazing progress, you know, like if you want to think about what is possible, in a year's time and again that doesn't need to be january 1st to january 1st like it can be just literally 365 sleeps 365 wake up with a fresh start a blank canvas a new day and point yourself towards what you want you want more love in your life you wake up in the morning you point yourself there You know, like it's that simple. That new beginning is at the beginning of every single day we have. Like the year, the culmination point of a year later, like that's really only something if you have the daily piece figured out. And that's where, you know, the, mm, I had the best time (laughs) writing this ebook, The Ultimate Guide to Self-Care. But really the the point, and I'll give it to you here, you don't need to read the ebook to get this, like the point of daily self-care is that you customize it to fit you. Like if you don't customize the ritual so that it fits you like a glove, like a soft, sexy glove that like feels like a delicious treat to get to put on, like if that's what your self-care is, showing up every day is like no big deal. No big deal. Super easy. You wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I can't wait to go put on the super sexy glove. You know, like I love that thing. I love it. I can't wait to get my journal and write the date at the top of the page and remind myself this is a brand new day. I can't wait to go get my cup of coffee and hold it in my hands and smell it. I can't wait to hold my cat. I can't wait to give him a hug and hold him and feel his little paw patting me on the back. Like, get over here, Bob Kitty. (laughs) I can't wait. 
you wait like when the self-care is customized to you when you wake up in the morning it's the it's what you reach for you know and that is another piece that i love doing is like giving people permission to feel like they're already doing better than they thought they were because i'll tell you what like most of us reach for our self-care first thing in the morning every single day already no matter what and so it's just a matter of like you know look at what you reach for and you know is that the optimal self-care that you can think of and here's the deal about it like go in full circle with where we started is like there's something to be said about having any tool to get the job done you know like i'm hearing in my mind somebody that you know reaches in the morning for social media or like your phone and like you're gonna scroll for a while in the morning and like dude i do this like it's no big deal like is it better if you don't maybe it depends on what you see it depends on what you see when you're doing that and if you're seeing stuff that upsets you looking at it first thing in the morning like you're pointing yourself that first few moments of focus is really powerful as far as what the rest of the day is going to be. And so like, again, that's where, you know, that's every day. That's not the, the first of the year only. So that's power we can harness and power that we can understand that the way that we focus early in the day is really going to set a pattern for what the rest of the day is. And so if we're looking at something, anything that upsets us first thing in the morning, I would say that's not good quality self-care. And probably there's a slightly different version of that or there's a different activity altogether that would set you in a more positive direction and nobody says you can't you know go look at that thing that you wanted to look at that you were looking at every day like let's say you check the news and like it normally upsets you so you're like okay well i'm not going to look at the news first thing so i'm going to cut out the news i'm never going to look at the news again that going cold turkey business is pretty difficult but like what if you said like as a as an incremental every day like for the rest of this month for 30 days in a row you know like so and so somebody says that it takes uh 21 days to form a habit i would say takes quite a bit longer than that if you really want the habit to last for the rest of your life but 21 days will get you a really good bite on it so yeah round it up to 30 say you're going to spend a month where for the first hour of the day you don't look at the news you know you have to be up for at least an hour and then you can look at the news because the fact that that is happening, it could be the same news, right? Like the same upsetting news. But the fact that it's happening in the second hour of the day means that it's having less impact on the trajectory of your day because it didn't happen in the first hour. And once you've done that for a month and you're like really liking how like less the effect is, like again, I would say think about you know two hours into the day or six hours into the day or i only look at the news on these few days of the week and then there's days when i don't look at the news and you know i personally did the cold turkey thing only because i was like starting to have panic attacks when i would look at the news like i didn't need to dial it back i needed to turn it off like i was i was in deep and i needed some oxygen i needed to dry out i needed like a news rehab center but i don't think they make those so i just had to stop watching the news i had to focus on something else and that shift in focus again like the beginning of every day the blank slate of every day is a power that we can harness and apply to our advantage for setting ourselves up for success as many days as we can you know like every day looks different that's the sum of that book the ebook the you know self-care guide and basically what it is is like here's a bunch of pieces that fit in there somewhere as far as like every day looks different so today might be about self-permission journaling and using my voice you know those are the real pieces that are at play today in my self-care because of how i'm feeling because of what happened yesterday because of what i want to happen tomorrow like because of how i feel today that's the package of self-care i'm giving myself today that's only three elements there's like a hundred different pieces in this book of like 50 techniques gosh like 20 
20 some i'll put it on the screen yeah you can see like there's a lot of pieces of like depending on how you're feeling you may need a slightly different package of care to be given to you so that you can feel your best and that's where again like if every day you're lining yourself up with a customized ritual that feels like so delicious when you get to put it on so that you can show up to your self-care so that you can naturally develop the understanding of self that naturally leads to self-love that naturally leads to self-protection that naturally leads to you treating yourself like the precious one that you are And what's possible in this upcoming year is more of that, you know, more of knowing yourself to be the precious, trusting whatever the precious needs today, you know, today the precious needs popcorn and candy, okay? So the inner parent better get in the car and take the wallet and go to the place and get the popcorn and the candy. And do you know who the precious runs into while she's out on the outing of getting the popcorn and the candy is somebody else that feels like a light, that feels like a beautiful exchange of energy, of enthusiasm for life, of going with the flow, of following your fun and your pleasure and your spontaneity. And our spontaneity, both of us, led us to that exact point to run into each other in the candy aisle at the place, get to have a nice little rendezvous with a a soul sister. And that was beautiful. All because to take care of the precious right now, I need to buy the precious some popcorn and some candy. <laughs> you know, like self-care is what it is. And that uh, that too is the mission of that ultimate guide to self-care is to give people the sense of like, wait, I think I'm already doing it. I think I'm already taking care of myself. Like I, you know, giving people that message of like, you're already doing it. And if you wanted to do it a little bit more, if you wanted to, you know, do it a little bit earlier in the day so that it had a bigger impact on like your energy throughout your whole day. Like, dude, like these are things, these are intentions. This is stuff that you can, in the blank slate of what tomorrow is, you can put in other pieces, you know, like I want, I want this. And so tomorrow you put it on the slate. And if you like how it felt, chances are the next day when you wake up, you're going to put it on the slate again, you know, and someday This is a big piece for me, too, that has really come into this is my yearly mantra for 2024 is the year of trust, the year of trust. This grew out of my 2023 year of spiritual support. The year of trust is really about trusting the process, trusting the days when what the precious needs is popcorn and candy. That's the self-care that's on the menu for today. And we're doing it. We're embracing it wholeheartedly. It's our self-care. We're sleeping in. We're binging out. We're in potato mode. And the only time we left the house today was to go and get candy. You know, like that's that's my self-care for today. And I trust the process. Right. Because doing it and embracing it is one thing, but you can also simultaneously be giving yourself shit for it at the same time. And so the part like the incremental change that is happening is like now, you know, I've gotten really good at feeling what I need. I need candy, giving myself what I need. Go get the candy. But the part that is only just now coming online is the not giving myself shit about it while I'm doing it as far as like the sugar is going to hurt you. The sugar is going to rot your teeth. The sugar is going to make you feel sick. The sugar is blah, 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 like blah, 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 blah. Telling myself all the things about all the reasons why I don't need what it is that I think that I need. You know, like I'm letting myself have it and I'm fighting with myself about it all at the same time. So this whole year of trust, like that's just one example of a place where I am letting go of the fight. You know, like I feel the need. I meet the need. End of story. I trust the process. And that is where I'm at as far as like, you know, I have no idea 
what this year is going to bring. I know that every morning when I open my journal and I write the date at the top of the page, I am going to write 2024, the year of trust. And already, even in, you know, the week or so that I've like been clearly confirmed that like this is what I'm going to be doing for my yearly mantra, the year of trust. I've already started to dabble in that energy and already like this, that's where these lessons are coming from as far as like what I'm sharing with you so far of it's helping me to let go of the angst around whatever the process is today. You know, like there is no should, there's no target, there's no, there's no external validator there's really not there's only what do you need and how can we give it to you and and how you're feeling about that and so i look at this year of trust as really leaning into the softness of letting the process be whatever it is and so i have no idea where I'll be a year from now, but I do know the power of leveraging 365 days in a row. And if you want to hear more about my yearly mantra practice, I already gave it to you. Like the practices you write it at the top of your journal page every day, every day. And you feel for like, where do you feel a little bit limited? Like what feels like the next level, you know, like I'm, like I'm describing, like, you know, the, I, I can feel what I need. I can give myself what I need, but I still feel like shit about it even while I'm doing it. So here, let me trust a little bit more. Let me trust where these needs are coming from. Let me trust myself to give myself what I need. Let me trust. Let me be free of worry. Let me trust, you know, like that feels like just the one step that's next. And so identifying that one step that's next and then leveraging Basically, just remind yourself the year of trust, the year of trust, the year of trust for 365 days in a row. Starting any time, again, doesn't have to be the first. Like I said, I started this like a week or two ago with the year of trust. Like the the process of the reminder every day and especially early in the day and how it plants that seed or it waters that seed. It shines a little bit more sunlight on that seed so that every day the plant that's growing up out of that idea of trusting or like last year, spiritual support, like what grows up out of that throughout the day and how it reminds you later, like another one that's really funny, but like my cats like to pee in the loft up above my bedroom. And if they do, it will leak through the floorboards of the ceiling and will leak down into my bedroom. So it's like the most disgusting thing you could ever imagine. And they only do it when I'm a little bit delinquent on the litter box. (laughs) So like, I guess that's a fair trade, but you know, like this is what's happening. And I got to where I was having like literal PTSD anytime I even heard them walking upstairs, I would like instantly clench up like, oh my God, they're going to pee. They're going to, and like this year of trust mantra being introduced to me like every morning, even just for the few mornings I've done it so far. It's like in that moment of intense fear, like almost instantly, there's this moment of like trust in what is going to happen you know like what is going to happen is going to happen whether you want to clench about it or not okay so like in this moment this rush of energy you can use it to try to intervene but before you do that go ahead and trust that what is going to happen is going to happen okay And so like a relinquishing of control of like, it's up to me to control what happens and what else is trust, right? Like I'm not trying to control it. I just let it be and I trust it to be. I trust like I'm, I'm seriously feel like I've just not even begun to scratch the surface on like what even is trust. And that's why for me, I love these year long contemplations and I've done six years I think this will be my seventh year but I used the same mantra for the first two years so the first two years were the best year ever the sec the second mantra I used which was for the third year was most magical year and then came the year of speaking truth 
and then came the year of inner abundance and then came the year of spiritual support and now we're headed into the year of trust so you see kind of the trajectory and the journey that they've taken and if you're interested in getting to hear the story and like the surprising ways that every single mantra like grew arms and legs and like became something so much more than what I could have imagined originally through like letting myself focus on it for so many days in a row. That's the story that I tell in Mantra Magic. Check it out. The link to the Etsy shop is down below. Um, Also coming soon in the Etsy shop, and I want to put this out there in case you are vibing, um, printed copies of the eBooks so there are ebooks stacking up over in the Etsy shop. I've mentioned a couple of them, um, but printed versions of those where like you can get a spiral bound version in full color. <sighs> you guys, I haven't held them yet, but soon, soon. I can already feel it. I can like, I'm like manic about it. I'm so excited. Um, but keep that in mind if you would rather have a printed copy because all of the ebooks have lots of space for self reflection and journaling and like questions and like lines for you to answer those questions. And so the the printed copies will be like right there ready for you to just like literally grab a pen and go to town. Whereas the ebook version, you'd have to have like a supplemental journal or print off the ebook version if you want or whatever. Um, So those printed copies are coming soon and I will keep you posted on the channel when they are available. Please just know that like literally, you know, I, I gotta scratch that, like not literally, the high points of what are in those two ebooks I've given you for free in this video of like everyday self-care is different. It's going to be a different package of care every day and really do like trust the process as best you can. And Mantra Magic is leveraging time, like leveraging the power of starting your day with the same idea for 365 days in a row and like what kind of freaking worlds that will open up in your experience. Um, it's a magical tale. There's a reason I call it Mantra Magic and I am freaking looking forward to what this year of trust is really ultimately trying to open up in my world. Um, I have a lot of fears around a lot of things. And so I could use a lot more trust in my, in my reality to like really let go. Oh God, that deep breath felt really good to really let go of a lot of control that I am still grasping to, right? The illusion of control anyway. So I hope that there was something (laughs) in here for you as far as valuable for not only floating over this transition or this arbitrary line in the sand, um, but also for leveraging the power of what it is to count time, right? Like that's not nothing. And being inspired towards, I want to be more, that's not nothing. But like, you don't need it to be the beginning of the year to really take advantage of that. So I hope that this video did something to help you in some kind of way. Until next time, I hope that you will take such good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for being around the channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for being on your healing journey. I got to think you are if you listen to this video. Thank you for being here on the planet. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I genuinely appreciate it. We are all in this together and I can feel the vibes coming off of your experience. I am sending out my own in response. Until next time, you take such good care of yourself and so will I.